The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, so for number one, we need to find the domain of a function. So we're asked, what is the domain of the following function? We have the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. So remember that in finding the domain, we only have a couple of uh, limitations uh, depending on what type of function we have. Here we have a fraction, so you know in a fraction, your denominator can never be zero. So right away, we can say that x cannot be zero or else we'd be divided by zero, that doesn't work. Also, we have a square root. Everything inside a square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's our last condition. We need to say one minus x squared over x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if we solve that inequality coupled with the fact we knew that x couldn't be zero in the first place, we'll figure this out. So remember that when you have a rational function and inequality, you want to find all the zeros at the top and the bottom put them on a number line and check points from there. So let's think about all the numbers that we should be putting on the number line. Well, we definitely have zero from the denominator. In the top, this could be plus or minus one. So those are all the numbers we put. And we just need to uh, test numbers to see if the answer comes out positive or negative. Um, so remember that you don't need to actually figure out the particular number. You just need to figure out whether the whole expression is positive or negative. So, for example, trying something bigger than 1, the top is clearly going to be negative, and the bottom is some positive number, so this is going to be negative. Something in between 0 and 1, we have positive on the bottom. This is going to make the top positive now because the something in between 0 and 1 squared is going to be less than 1. So this is positive. These two things over here, for the numerator, are going to be the same as the ones on the right because we have it squared. But now we're going to be dividing by a negative number, so these are going to flip. So instead of a positive, we're going to have a negative, and instead of a negative, we're going to have a positive. So we were looking for positive, so we have these two, but we needed to think about what's going on at the endpoints. Well, zero is definitely not good because, first of all, we already said that up here, but secondly, you're dividing by zero in this fraction as well. That has to be an open circle. And what else has to be true for negative one and one? Well, negative one or one, if you plug them in there, we're going to get one minus one, zero. Zero is fine because this is or equal to. So these are both going to be closed circles. So you can see here then that this is everything to the left there and this little range in there, open circles and closed circles where they should be. So let's think about what this means in interval notation. So we have everything from negative infinity up to and including negative one. So you put a bracket on that negative one. And then union this little section here. So we have from zero not including zero up to and including one. So make sure you have your brackets and parentheses correct. Uh, that, of course, then leads you to answer choice D with that answer there. So for the domain, you need to check um, for square roots, fractions, and logs when you eventually get to that. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.